as we look at the rest of the big races at uh, Belmont Park on Saturday, Stars and Stripes card at Belmont Park, the first and biggest question I think of the of the dirt stakes is, will the real Mendelssohn please stand up? What do you think, Matt? That is the big question. Um, Brian, as you know, I, I was a huge Mendelssohn fan heading into the Kentucky Derby. Um, as we all know, the that was an absolute draw line through. Uh, Mendelssohn never got to run, got crushed out of the gate, the rain, the slop, and such. Um, but And now we're coming back to uh, the dirt again. We remember before the Derby, uh, Mendelssohn's huge performance at, in Dubai in the UAE Derby. What are we going to see in the Dwyer? I don't know, Brian. I assume we're going to see Mandelson as a uh, pretty significant favorite in there. I don't know uh, if that excites me, but there's a lot of good horses in there. A lot of horses that have question marks about them, too. Yeah, Matt, from a betting standpoint, I'm not really excited about the Dwyer. But as a, as a fan, I am. I do expect Mendelssohn. Uh, to to run a very good race in here. The Kentucky Derby certainly is a draw line through it. That That's not the real Mendelssohn by any uh, shape or form. But uh, Beholder's little brother is uh, a very, very big talent. He's undefeated at a mile. I believe he's three for three at a mile. But he'll have to be sharp in here at this one-turn mile. Maybe there's bigger things to come for him, and this is more of a prep. But I expect uh, class will tell in this wire. There are some interesting horses, as you alluded to, though. Ferenzi Fires, only one race at Belmont. He won the Champagne also at a mile, the grade one Champagne last year. And we've said all along he's a miler, Matt. Uh, Noble Indy, the Louisiana Derby winner, coming out of poor performances in the Kentucky Derby and the Belmont. And how about rugby, man, Matt? Uh, he uh, only had three races so far. Uh, the uh, easy goer was his third lifetime race. It looked like he should win that, but he certainly was green down the stretch. The talented son of Tappet now adds blinkers for this Dwyer. Yeah, I like rugby rugby man in here also, Brian. Um, it's Grand Motion. They're putting blinkers on. Um, I guess they're looking to help to solve some of those uh, stretch run uh, issues that happen there. Lightly raced. I think this is this is a horse that has a lot of room to get better. So um, if the real Mendelssohn... Uh, doesn't show up. I think Rugby Man's got a nice shot in there. I think we should also mention Seven Trumpets from uh, the Dale Romans Barn, recent allowance winner, finished second on the Derby Trail in the Jerome in New York. Talented horse um, that I don't think we've seen the best from yet. Another one that that could throw in a big one. You know, Romans has a way of getting horses ready for uh, spots like this, but I guess uh, if I got a pick in here, like you said, Brian, I agree. Mendelssohn should win, but I might take a shot on Rugby Man. Yeah, Rugby Man would be my shot as well, but I want to see Mendelssohn show his true stuff Saturday in the Dwyer. All right, Matt, uh, while that is kind of dominated by Mendelssohn, the Dwyer, we then go to the Suburban, and the Suburban, I think... Uh, uh, is another one of those almost Belmont Oaks type of races where you have a lot of interesting horses. I'm just going to run through them real quick here, Matt, but perhaps the most interesting three out of the Brooklyn, Opportunity, that wonderful seven-year-old horse who keeps going and going strong and long. War Story ran a very good Brooklyn, just couldn't hold off Opportunity late and is is a real war, war horse, a warrior, if you will. And then don't forget about Take Your Guns, who came up a little short after uh, after a, a little bit of a wide trip there in the Brooklyn. He's he's an improving sort. Then you got Dr. Door, who's uh, putting his talent finally to good use for uh, uh, out there in California, the son of looking at Lucky. Strong second in the uh, Gold Cup last time, and he won the California nicely before that. Tapper, the Belmont winner, diversified the Jockey Club Gold Cup winner. Matt, will they be ready to show their best stuff here? in the suburban that's quite a field that you described there brian uh, uh what a great field they're going 10 furlongs they're not going the mile and a half here uh, um 
Lots of question marks about Taprit. It seems like they have solved the foot problems that uh, plagued him all last year after uh, the Belmont Stakes. They tried to get him back and take care of, of the feet, but they weren't able to. Came back, finished third in an allowance race, uh, allowance race in his last start, which was clearly just a prep race, uh, a prep race in here. Um, I don't know, Brian. I, I think I'm leaning towards opportunity. He seems to just absolutely love Belmont Park. He's two for two at Belmont Park. He loves the big sweeping turns at Belmont Park. Uh, um, I don't know. He just never runs a bad race, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him here in suburban. Yeah, I don't I don't blame you at all, Matt. It'll be interesting to see. He's one of the horses I think they have to bet, and it's possible he's the favorite. Uh, Tapper, you know, you look at that losing allowance race, and I think people are gonna uh, wonder about that. But I, I think that was a really good prep. Um, Pletcher likes to come back and win, of course, but that was a fast mile. That should do a world of good for Tapper as he's getting more conditioning this year. Tapper's probably not going to be my top pick, but I certainly uh, think he's got a big shot. The, the Belmont winner ran a lot of good races last year. Even the Travers is fourth in the Travers. Uh, Tapper is, is a big danger in here. Diversify, obviously likes Belmont. He's rounding back into form. Or uh, Dr. Gore, really sharp, sharp form out in California. Uh, they're both speed types, so uh, that could take a little starch out of either one, but they're both dangerous in here. Take your guns as a long shot is interesting to me because I think he's still still got a little bit more under the tank. And don't forget about War Story because in the Brooklyn, if that was a mile and a quarter race, War Story might have beaten Opportunity that day. And War Story might get the trip a little bit earlier jump uh, at, uh, at the uh, horses up there on the lead than, than Opportunity does. And if you're telling me War Story is going to be 8-10 to 1 because of the... the uh, depth of this field uh maybe war stories might play and war story always shows up and always competes so at that kind of price uh you gotta look uh more than once at war story absolutely but an interesting suburban like i said a jockey club gold cup winner a belmont stakes winner the top uh probably the three best horses from the brooklyn you got millionaires you got a california horse who's really come into his own of late so a very interesting suburban as is the belmont uh, sprint mat now i'm i'm not really to be honest i'm not really interested in this as a race of depth there's only i believe there's only six in here there is some speed but the top two really are two of the finest sprinters in the country and both were uh, uh good performers on belmont stakes day although whitmore second in the true north and limousine liberal third in the met mile neither got the win I think one of them will get the win on Saturday. It would seem that way, Brian. Uh, uh, the Belmont Sprint, it's a grade two. And it's also a Breeders' Cup win and you're in race. Um, please note that the race is run at seven furlongs, which is a distance that Limousine Liberal loves. I think that's Limousine Liberal's best distance. The third in the Met Mile was a really, really good performance because I don't think the mile is that horse's best uh uh, best distance, and and he ran third behind B Jersey, who just ran an amazing race in the Met Mile in that battle with Mind Your Biscuits. Um, I think Limousine Liberals got a little bit of a class edge in here. You gotta love Whitmore. Ran a big race in the True North, six furlongs. I think seems to be Whitmore's best distance. Um, you also have in the race, just need to mention Shaft of Light for trainer Jorge Navarro, um, who has a way of getting horses to uh, let loose some big performances. Um, Shaft of Light was second last time out in the Salvador Mile behind Paige McKinney at Monmouth Park. That was a two-turn mile. He's cutting back to seven furlongs, which is his clear, clearly his favorite distance. Certainly class questions there, but uh, Navarro's are always dangerous. But I got to give uh, my nod to Limousine Liberal. I'm with you, Matt. Uh, yeah, and I think the speed, uh, the other speed in the race, there's some quality horses. Favorable outcome we didn't mention either. Uh, 
horse who could bounce back and still be a nice, uh, especially at seven furlongs. But uh, yeah, I think Limousine Liberal uh, fits really well in here. I've said all along that uh, uh, watch out for him on slop. If the Breeders' Cup sprints on slop this year, he'll be my top pick. Uh, what are we, four or five months out still? But uh, Limousine Liberal is is better than ever, and seven furlongs is a good distance. He's got speed to run at. I like him a little bit better than Whitmore in here. Uh, Limousine Liberal and Whitmore are two horses that I fully expect to see in the Breeders' Sprint at the end of the year. Matt, that's that's a pretty nice card. Belmont Derby, Belmont Oaks, Dwyer Suburban, and Belmont Sprint Saturday at Belmont. Would you say, Matt? It sure is. And those, uh, you know, those stakes races are part of. There's a late pick four at Belmont, and if you're on the track, there's the 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 Naira Betts pick five, which uh, has got all those stakes in it that uh that you can bet if you're on site at the track or in through naira bets 